Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. There are many diseases that human beings can contract. Some are dangerous to others, and we call these contagious diseases. Now, most diseases today can be treated and cured by the wonder drugs of modern miracle medicine. In fact, vaccines are given now so that we need never get these dreaded diseases. But there's one disease that is mental and emotional that's pretty hard to cure, and there isn't any drug available to cure it. The cure for this disease can come only with the Lord's help and strong mental discipline. Our story today is built around this common mental condition. It's called The Cruel Man. Hold still and take what's coming to you, you miserable no good neck. I'll teach you to fuck me. I'll break your will or your back. Try to get away, eh? I'll show you, you ungrateful colt. I'll show you who's boss around here. <laughs> Stop whimpering, you ornery colt. From now on, you'll remember that I'm boss around here. The man who whipped that colt within an inch of his life is Basil Rathcombe. He has an uncontrollable temper that can become an insane rage at the drop of a hat. No one on the big mesa likes Basil, and they have as little to do with him as possible. They call him the cruel man. Boy, it sure is hot up here on the big mesa today. Yep, but sure is, sonny. Must be in the high 90s. We better find a shady spot and rest our horses. Ah, you said it. How about over there by Muskrat Creek? I'm with you, boy. Lead the way. Oh, Bessel girl. Oh, there, oh, there Tony. Boy, it sure is funny to see you ride Tony. Well, I've been used to seeing you ride Matilda all these years. Yeah, sure too bad she had to break her leg. Yep, it seems peculiar to you. How do you think it feels for me? Tony is a good horse, but someday I'm going to get me another horse for myself. I don't blame you. Oh, say, this shade sure feels good. I think I'll just use my saddle for a pillow and take a snooze. Yep, me too, young feller. That old sun's a burning mighty hot right now. Oh, you said it. Bess, be quiet. Enjoy the shade. Go we'll stand in the creek if you want. It'll make you feel nice and cool. Yeah, Tony, hush up, will you? You can go stand in the creek, too. Yes, I told you to cut the... Hey, say, she didn't win he. <laughs> hey, look at her. <laughs> Standing there in the creek and eating grass from the bank. Huh? <laughs> Tony's doing the same thing. Hey, that Winnie isn't coming from our horses, Stumpy. It sure isn't. We better find the horse that's calling for help. Calling for help? Yep, and it's a young horse, too. Let's find it, Sonny, before we're too late. Easy there, young feller. We're not going to hurt you. 
Nobody else is neither. No, sir, he, nobody's going to hurt you. Easy now, that's a boy. And your head down to rest. Easy now. Uh, just take it easy, real easy. Boy, somebody sure worked this yearling over real good. Boy, what kind of a guy? Careful would... now, sonny. Harsh words ain't going to help this cold none. Guess you're right. Guess we'd better start patching him up. First, we got to get him out of this boiling hot sun and over by the creek. Well, how? He's in bad shape. Well, we'll cut a couple of big pine boughs and make a skid. Pull him over to the creek with our horses. Yeah, that should work. He's not full grown. I'll get my axe and cut some big pine branches. Good boy. Well, saddle up Bess and Tony and get them over here. Right. Uh, there's one thing more, Sonny. Oh, did I forget something? Nope. Just keep your eyes open. The man that did this is liable to return to finish the job. Oh. No. Yep. If a man hates an animal enough to beat him this bad, he'll come back to finish the job. When he does, we'll be waiting for him. How much more germ killer we got left in that bottle, Henry? Not much. Maybe enough for one more basin of fresh water. Uh, yeah, let me see. I guess that'll do it if we make it stretch a little. You want me to ride to the nearest ranch and get some more antiseptic? Nope. You stay with the cold and I'll go. Well, okay, if you say so. Say, I don't like the tone of your voice. You've got something on your mind. The nearest ranch is Basil Rascombs. Sure, I know that. Say, you don't think he beat this cold so badly, do you? Yep, I do think so. Look at the brand on his poor critter. The box B. Well, that's Basil's brand. It ain't George Washington, sonny. Here, that'll hold this youngster for a while. Now you make sure he, he don't try to get up while I'm gone. Okay, I'll watch him you close. You keep one eye on the cold and the other eye on the range. Just in case Basil shows up while I'm gone. Hold it! What's the matter with you, Henry? Why the shoot? I shot into the ground as a warning. You just stay right where you are. Listen, young sir, you don't tell me what to do. You're on my range, and that's my colt. And you're the one that almost beat it to death, too. Ah, what business is that of yours? It's my animal. Now, my orders are to keep you away from that colt, and that's just what I'm going to do. <laughs> Who else is with you? There's only one more, boss. Ah, uh, there's another horse tracks here. It's going away from here. It looks like it's heading for your ranch house. <laughs> Probably going to get help for that stupid colt. Okay, Henry, get away from the vermin. I'm taking what's mine. That's what you think. You move toward this horse and you get a broken leg. Rush him, boys. Yeah, hey, here we are. And stop me right there. What are these three scallywags up to, Henry? They're after the coal. Oh, is that right? Basil, you get your man yourself out of here. Now, Scat. That's my cold line to get him right now. Yeah, you tell him, boss. We're with you. Let's take the cold and beat it. Come on. You make one step toward that beaten horse, and old Betsy here starts spitting hot lead, and this time she won't miss. You better think it over, boys. The old timer's a dead shot. We're not about to let you have the cold. Now, Basil, don't you reach for your rifle. Can't you get it through your thick hair that you're not going to get the cold? That's what you think, you old fossil. Maybe I won't get it now, but you won't get it off my range. I'll get the coat and I'll get you for this. You're on my range and you're stealing my horse. Sure we are. Henry, seeing as how these men ain't going to behave, we'll tie them to that tree over there until we can get away with the coat. <laughs> We're all set, Stumpy. This pine branch skid ought to last a hundred miles. Good boy. Now, Basil, if you boys work at these knots, you'll be able to get them loose, say, in about an hour and a half. You'll be sorry for this, Stumpy Jenkins. You'll be the sorriest man that ever walked. <laughs> you quit hollering. 
Now I'll roll you out in the sun like you did to that poor horse. Uh. I ain't got much use for a man like you, Basil, so don't push me around with your mouth. I'd just as soon give you a whipping right here and now. But it wouldn't be the Christian thing to do. I could take you to town and put you in the cooler. But you'd only be the worse when you got out. Go on home, old man. Stop nagging me with your sermons. You've got a terrible disease, mister. A terrible disease. Someday that temper of yours is going to get you into some real trouble. Well, that's my worry, not yours. I'm still going to get my horse back. I hope Basil and his two cowboys are loose by now, old timer. <laughs> they are. I didn't want them to get loose. I had to tie a different knot so they couldn't get out by New Year's Day. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> Tying them up was better than risking a shooting scrape, wasn't it, Bill? Yeah, and I hope. Basil's the kind of man that'll nurse a grudge a long time and feed it with his fiery rage. We haven't heard the last of him. You ain't telling me a thing, sonny. Them eyes of his almost burned holes in his head. They're so filled with hate and anger and revenge. He's got a nasty disease, that man. That's the second time you called Basil's temper a disease, Stumpy. How do you figure that? Now you tell him, Bill. Uh, you're better with the long-handled words than I am. Well, pal, a person with a fiery temper does have a disease of the emotions and mind. But it's not only a disease. When a man loses his temper over nothing more than selfishness, it's sin. And it's wrong. Once his temper gets beyond the point where he can control it, it goes wild. And usually the person involved loses all self-control and either remembers what he did or said during the spell. Kind of like a drunk man, eh? Mm, it's a good simile. Well, how can he stop being like that? Well, first of all, the Lord certainly can help him. Of course, if he's not a Christian, then he could do well to accept the Lord as Savior, thereby taking the first step to overcoming this sinful life. And then, with the Lord's help, he can refuse to let himself become excited. Things he knows will make him angry, he should avoid. It takes a great deal of mental and self-discipline, Henry, and it's always wise to seek medical help from a doctor who could give some valuable help. It certainly is, Bill. Oh, Paddle work. <laughs> Where'd work. you come from? Hey, you must have aisled the hinges on the door, huh? Uh, either that or you paid for your shoes and they don't squeak anymore. Oh, oh me poor flat feet are killing me, Stumpy. Yes, and what I'm about to do to you is killing me, too. Huh? Huh. What do you mean, what you're about to do to me? I have in me pocket a warrant for your arrest for horse-stealing and trespassing on private property. What? Here it is, signed by Basil Rascom. I thought so. Well, come on, old-timer. We'll go down to see the sheriff and post bail. I've had to serve a lot of warrants in my day. However, this is one of the few times I'd just as soon serve it on myself. First case is Basil Rascom versus Stumpy Jenkins. Stumpy Jenkins, you are accused of horse stealing and trespassing on private property. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Your Honor. That's a bold faced lie if I ever had one. <laughs> bailiff, bailiff, clear the courtroom at once if another outburst like this occurs. Basil, if you don't control yourself in this court of law, I'll cite you for contempt. Do you understand? Yeah, Your Honor. Stumpy Jenkins, take the stand. Yes, sir. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so up you God. I affirm to tell the truth as a Christian. Very well. Mr. Jenkins, you are charged with horse stealing. Is that true? Uh, yep, in a way I suppose it is, since it didn't pay for the colt and he's wearing Basil's brand. Well, then why do you plead not guilty to the charge? Because, Your Honor, I was helping a yearling horse who was beaten near to death with a whip. And the person that beat him came back to finish him off. We had to stand him off at rifle point or he'd have killed a poor animal for sure. 
Then I brought the wounded horse back here to town for safekeeping in the ranger stables. Uh, that's very interesting, but we must remember one thing. We're here to determine whether or not you are guilty of horse stealing. Not the fact that a person or persons beat the horse and treated it cruelly. I understand that, Judge. And what I'm saying is that there are special circumstances that force me to steal a colt. If you want to put it that way, I'd say I took the colt into protective custody, which would be a true picture. Have you claimed this horse as your own? No, sir. Would you return the horse to its owner after it's uh, recovered? No, sir. Not unless I could be sure the same thing wouldn't happen all over again. I see. Why didn't you arrest the person responsible for beating the colt and treating it so cruelly? Well, I was more concerned about the animal, Your Honor. You see, it had been left out in the boiling hot sun. Is that so? Yes, sir. I'd like to invite the judge to see the horse at the ranger stables. Thank you. I'll accept that invitation. The court is recessed. The colt's here in this box stall, Your Honor. Oh, very good. Easy, boy, easy now. We're not going to hurt you. Uh, take a look, Judge. Great Scott, you weren't joking when you said this colt had been severely beaten. It ain't very pretty, is it, Your Honor? Well, the poor animal must be in considerable pain. It ain't now. I gave him a sedative. That's why his reactions aren't too sharp. Will he recover? Yes, sir. Fortunately, no bones are broken and no tendons or muscles cut beyond repair or in a vital spot. The man that did this must be powerful. Yep. Powerful and very cruel, Your Honor. Basil Rascom, I'm throwing this case out of court. Stumpy Jenkins acted perfectly within his right as a federal officer and as a human being. That, sir, is more than I can say for you. Although you are not on trial, I strongly suggest that you seek medical and spiritual help to control your temper and your meanness before you do come to trial in this court for a charge far more serious. <laughs> He's healing pretty quickly, don't you think, Stumpy? Yep, sure is. Must have been in the pink of condition. He's sure more relaxed since we've had him. Yeah, wouldn't you be if you figured now you're getting love and kind treatment instead of being whipped? Yeah, you said it. Good morning, gentlemen. Huh. Yeah, howdy, Judge. What brings you around so bright and early? It's been several days now since I've seen the horse. I'm interested to see how he's recovering. Well, come on in. Take a look for yourself. Hmm, he's healing fine. You men certainly know your stuff. But these dressings are expertly done. The ranger has to know how to take care of his horse, sir. His life can depend on it. All rangers love animals, or they wouldn't be rangers. Stumpy, there's one thing that bothers me. Huh? What's that, Your Honor? Why don't you arrest Basil Rascom for cruelty to animals? Well, sir, it's this way. If I pinched him... That only make his cruelty to this horse in particular uh, justifiable in his own mind. He might just take out his feelings on another poor animal. Well, what you say is quite true. The way I look at it, Judge, is that it's my duty as an officer and as a Christian to try to teach the man the error of his ways without using the strong arm of the law, if I possibly can. That's why I tied him to a tree the other day. <laughs> yes, I heard about that. <laughs> yeah, no doubt you did. I was determined that he wouldn't get the colt. I was also determined to keep him from doing anything foolish while he was in one of his raging fits. You see, if he'd have come after us and started shooting, I would have had to fire at him, because I not only had the wounded colt, but I had Henry with me. You're a wise man, Stumpy, a good officer. Well, you can see trouble before it starts, and you prevent its happening. Well, Judge, I don't hate the man for what he's done to this colt. 
I feel sorry for him and pity him because he's got a weakness yes, that leads yes. him into wrongdoing. Yes, I agree with you. I wish I knew some way to cure him of these raging fits before he makes a fatal mistake. Mm, so do I. A man as cruel and hot-tempered as he is must hate himself as well as everything and everybody around him. Yes, that's what worries me. You haven't heard the last of this yet, by any means. Bill, have you seen Stumpy? Uh, no. Have you, Henry? No, and his horse is gone. Tony, I mean. Huh? It is? Well, where'd he go? They wouldn't tell us. I have a good idea. He wouldn't go out to Basil's ranch alone. I'm not so sure about that. I know he's packing a roll of bills. You mean he's going to try and buy the colt? Sure. He's taking a real liking to the youngster and, and vice versa. I'll saddle Storm and we'll ride like the wind. Instead of a bill of sale, the old timer's liable to get a ticket for a ride to the hospital. We'll cut through the dry gulch. Sleeps up close to Basil's ranch house. Right. You go ahead. Best can't keep up with Storm for long. I was thinking the same thing, especially in this heat. I'm going on ahead. Okay. Watch yourself. I will. Come on, Storm boy. Let's travel. I don't like to run you in this heat. This is an emergency. Give it all you got, Storm. Basil. There ain't no fair proposition you can make, Stumpy Jenkins. Now get off my land before I stick my boys on you. Don't be a fool, Basil. Unless I miss my guess, that cloud of dust moving this way like a bowl of lightning is Bill. And there's more right behind him. So don't start nothing foolish. Yeah. Well, you get out of here. We ain't got nothing to talk about. Okay, if that's the way you want it. But it might not be in such a generous mood next time. You all right, old-timer? Sure, fits a fiddle. I was just trying to talk Basil into selling his coat to me for a fair price. I'm telling you for the last time I'm not selling, and that's final. I heard you the first time. I think you're foolish to pass up this offer. I want the coat back, and I'm going to get him. Basil, I've kept out of this so far, but now I'm butting in. Tain none of your affairs, so shut up. You're going to make one too many threats one of these days, and you'll be in trouble. Real trouble, like you've never had before. Now, you know that I don't like being pushed around, so don't try and push me too far. If I were you, mister, I'd go and see a doctor and a minister and try to get that insane temper of yours under control. I don't need no doctor, and I sure don't need a minister. Let me say something else. The Lord's helped men with worse afflictions than your temper. And he's cured them of it. There's not one thing that's impossible with the Lord. Is that so? That's right. You'd better get your Bible and start reading it, tough guy. It's getting so that very few people around here have any use for you. I heard about the tantrum you threw in the general store last week. I've also heard about you abusing your men as well as your animals. Yeah, that's my business. Not when you become a menace to everything that walks and breathes. Let me set you straight. I'm one person you don't scare, not a little bit. It's a good thing the old-timer's a Christian or you'd be in jail right now. In fact, the judge has asked Stumpy why he doesn't arrest you. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Basil, I feel sorry for you because you can help yourself and you refuse to do it. You give God and the doctor a chance to help you and you'll become a human being again. <laughs> Until such time, you'll not get the colt back. We'll keep him in protective custody. Because he's a symbol of your first serious defeat. You'll probably kill him if you get close enough. We'll just see that you don't. We tried being nice to you and showing you Christian love, but you played a strong hand against us. Well, just keep on and you'll find out the hand the law plays is stronger than yours. Yep, it sure is. Use your head, Sonny, and do the right thing. Get right with the Lord and then see a doctor. And uh, if you want uh, some help getting right with the Lord, uh, you know where to find us. 
Well, good day, sir. Let's go, Bill. Do you think Basil will behave himself now? Nope. Don't say as I can rightly say that, Henry. He's, uh, this kind of man just too often don't give in until it's too late. Which I hope doesn't happen in this case. I don't want it to happen either. That's right, fellas. I've been thinking about Basil. How to approach him about accepting the Lord. That's a tough one. I'll say. He's always on the muscle. Well, let's forget about him for the time being. Lock up and head for home. It's getting nigh into my bedtime. Ah, mine too. Then I'll start locking up. How about walking home, huh? It's such a nice evening. That sounds fine with me. Me too. I'll go check on the cold and make sure he's all tucked in for the night. And I'll lock the stable doors just in case. Trap shut, you old walrus, or I'll button it for you. You ain't gonna get away with taking that cold, Basil. Keep an eye on him, Al. While I get the cold and we'll get out of here. Sure, Loss. Don't try nothing foolish, old timer. I don't want to have to hit an old man like you. I'll show you how old I ain't if I get half a chance. Hold still, you mangy critter. Hey! Stop it, Eddie. Don't you whip that coat. Oh, get out of here. Where are you? You let go of that horse. Look out, boss. Dumpy's coming for you. Well, that's fine with me. I'll even up the score a little. Look out for that horse, boss. He's coming for you. Get him back. Get him back. He'll kill me. You can't run for it. Get out of here. Try and catch that cold. Don't you worry. There's a fence out there, and the rails are far enough apart for a man to dive through them head first. I told you that cold can read. Hey, look, he wants to see the bill of sale again. <laughs> Maybe he can. He's sure looking at it all right. <laughs> Can he talk to old-timer to thank you for buying him from Basil? Nope. He can't talk yet. Uh, not with words, that is. But he sure can with actions. Hey, get your cold nose out of my face, will you? <laughs> he sure can talk with actions, all right, old friend. He's showing his appreciation for the love and good care you've given him. Why, I'm sure glad Basil came and offered to sell him to you. I wonder... What made him change his mind? I wonder, too. Maybe he's decided that being a cruel man ain't such a good idea after all. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger!